Welcome to Behold the Real Jesus, brought to you by the Jesus Christ International Church. 325 South High Street, right here in Longview, Texas, right across from Kilgore College. Well, we count it an honor to come into your homes and businesses with this real Jesus. Behold the real Jesus, and the primary reason for the broadcast is that the closer we come to the coming of the Lord, the greater the revelation of Jesus Christ is going to be to his body, the church. For the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Means that we have greater revelation as the Holy Ghost leads and guides us all into all truth. For the knowledge of the glory of the Lord shall cover the earth and the waters cover the seas. For all shall know him from the least to the greatest. This is when judgments in the earth, men will learn righteousness. And righteousness is that Jesus came from the Father, proceeded from the Father, and went back to the Father, that he literally is the Father manifest in flesh, the embodiment of God. He is the Father Word, the Holy Ghost, dwelling in a body of flesh and blood as the revealed God, as the manifestation of God himself. When we look at how did God work salvation in and of himself, as we come into this Easter season of Passover, where Christ our Passover was sacrificed for us. How God himself so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth him should not perish but have everlasting life. 1 John 3, 16, hereby perceive the love of God because he laid down his life for us. Therefore, we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Acts 20, 28, take heed to yourselves and over all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God which he, God himself, hath purchased with his own blood. How did that happen? When we see the revelation of Jesus, the revelation of Jesus Christ is the last book of the Word of God in the Bible. The 66th book is the revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation of Jesus Christ is uh, the revealed God. In Revelation 1.8, Jesus claims that He is the Alpha and the Omega, which is, was, and is to come, the Almighty the Almighty God. You see, the Son of God has literal two states. One, there is a humble state in the Son of God in His humiliation. He's a man. In His glorification, He's God going back to the glory of the Father. Let's take a look at it. <clears throat> God Himself is a spirit. For God is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That spirit is the Yod Ha Wah Ha or Yahweh or Jehovah, which is the Lord. And we have many other titles Elohim, we have El Shaddai. All of these are titles of the Spirit of God. Uh, we have the Father, the Word, the Word is Spirit, the Word is life, the Holy Ghost, which is the Spirit of God. In the power office, the Word is the expression office, <clears throat> and the Father <clears throat> is the uh, administrative office of the Spirit. In the Old Testament, we have Yahweh, Jehovah, Lord, capital L-O-R-D, which is Jehovah. Elohim is a plurality of God's attributes. For God made man in his own image and his own likeness. In Genesis 1, God said, let us make man in our own image, a plural personal pronoun. However, when we read Genesis 1, so God made man in His singular personal pronoun, own image, after His own likeness. So there is a revelation there. God, who is spirit, 
made man in his own image. Whenever he said, let us, God is love. as an attribute of God. He is power. He is understanding. He is wisdom. All of these are different attributes. As we see in Jeremiah 51, 15, that God created the world by his power, the heaven uh, by his wisdom, and the earth by his understanding. We have three different attributes there in the creation, God himself, by power, wisdom, and understanding. Well, that's not three different persons. That is the attributes of God and all of his majesty. You see, when God said, let us make man, love came forward. Not only did love come forward, if love had not come forward, mankind could not love. Wisdom came forward. Well, we see in Proverbs 8, I, wisdom, was daily his delights. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence. Notice that wisdom uh, in Proverbs 8, uses a singular personal pronoun, I, wisdom. And wisdom is capitalized there because it is an attribute of God. God is wisdom. With all of our getting, let us get wisdom. Well, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence. Well, prudence is another attribute of God. All of these attributes, all the majesty of God, uh, when God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness, God was speaking of all his attributes, wisdom, power, understanding, uh, all that God, God's love, all of the attributes of God came forward. And he did make man in his own image after his own likeness. We see in Isaiah 44, 24, that he spanned the heaven uh, alone, by himself, and span the earth by myself alone. Therefore, the angels didn't have a, did not have a part in creation. Uh, neither did another person of the Godhead, for it was God alone that created the heaven and the earth. In Isaiah 44, 24. God is a spirit. Those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Uh, man is flesh and blood. And God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And Adam became a living soul. Adam was set over the works of God's hands. What is man that thou art mindful of him, the son of man that thou regardest him? Thou madest him a lower, little lower than the angels, crowned him with glory and honor, set him over the works of thine hands. But now we see not all things in under him, but we see Jesus. Why? Because Adam, by one man's disobedience, sin came to the world, and death by sin. Therefore, the penalty for that sin is death. And at this season of Easter, at this time of Passover, the Lord Jesus himself literally became sin for us, that, uh, that body of sin, he that knew no sin became sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The Spirit of God, Jesus being in the form of God, Philippians 2, 6, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. When he made himself of no reputation, that's key. It's a key to understanding how God, God himself, the father of glory, the father of all spirits, that God himself would humble himself in order to redeem mankind back to himself. You see, God himself made himself, God himself of no reputation. That means laying aside all dignity, laying aside all his glory, and literally veiled himself in a body of flesh and blood. Where do we see that? In Philippians 2, verse 6, Jesus being in the form of God, that is spirit, made himself of no reputation, laid aside his glory, his dignity, 
and took upon him the form of a servant. The servant there, God's servant, is the arm of the Lord. God looked for a man because a man lost it by one man's disobedience. Sin came to the world and death by sin. Therefore, God will have to have a man in order to pay the redemption price of death and the shedding of blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Therefore, God looked for a man and he was amazed that he could find none. For all had sinned and come short of the glory of God. None good, no, not one. Therefore, God said, my own arm brought salvation unto myself, God himself. The Son of God was not manifest in the flesh. You see the mystery of godliness, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness, for God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, believed on the world, preached unto the Gentiles, received up in the glory. 1 Timothy 3.16. It was God Himself that made Himself of no reputation, Jesus being in the form of God made himself of no reputation, took upon him another form. He added to his spirit the form of a servant. Only one person here, the express image of his singular person, the brightness of his glory, the image of the invisible God. For Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, show us the Father. The words that I speak are not mine, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. John 14. Jesus being in the form of God, made himself of no reputation, laid aside his glory, took upon him, added to him the form of a servant, made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, humbled himself in the death, the death of the cross. Therefore, this Jesus, this man, is uh, none other than the Son of God. Not God the Son, the Son of God. You see, there's two components to the Son of God. Number one, He has a spirit without measure. For John 3 said, God giveth not the spirit by measure unto Him. The Son will have the same exact spirit there, because he is a son, he and his father are one in the self-same spirit. John 10, 30, I and my father are one. The son of God, not God the son, the son of God is the flesh. Of God is uh, that holy thing that is born of thee, Mary, is of the Holy Ghost. That holy thing is of God, the Son of God. The Son is deity, the Spirit of God without measure. Of God is His body of flesh and blood. Therefore, that's the other component to the Son of God. The Son is the Father. Of God is a body of flesh and blood. It is the embodiment of God Himself. It is the fullness and all the fullness of the Godhead dwelling in Christ Jesus bodily. You see, the Son of God is, uh, in His humiliation, becomes a man, works as a man. Therefore, because He works as a man, this man will have his own will. The will is in the soul realm of the man. Mind, will, emotions, imagination, and intellect. The will of the man, because God has veiled himself in this body of flesh and blood, in whom are hidden all treasures of wisdom and knowledge in Colossians 2, verse 2, which is the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. Christ, first and foremost, is the Spirit of God. 1 Peter 1, verse 10, 11, search the Old Testament prophets spake by searching what or what manner of time that the Spirit of Christ, that Spirit of Christ is God Himself. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ that was in them did testify of the grace that should come to us. 
and the sufferings of Christ. So Christ, first of all, is the Spirit of God and uh, is the body of flesh and blood that he will reveal himself in as Christ. So Christ, which is a spirit, will offer himself as Christ, the man, and then will go back to the Father, proceeding from the Father, from God, going back to God. Uh, and this is a mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hidden all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Colossians 2, 9, all the fullness of the Godhead dwelleth, that is, houses permanently in Christ Jesus bodily. One body that is the express image of his singular person. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, uh, not a second person of the Godhead, but God himself. Therefore, Jesus in the days of his flesh will work only as a man because uh, the Spirit of God has literally made himself of no reputation. That's the reason Jesus will not work a miracle until he's age 30. He will not uh, literally take the office of a high priest until he's age 30. Why? Because he's going to fulfill the law. The law says that the high priest will take his office at age 30, and retire at age 50. There was three things that they will do for the high priest to take his office. Number one, he will be anointed of oil. Number two, they will lay hands on him. Number three, and speak over the high priest in that office, thou art a priest in my stead. And the father would pass on to the son the high priesthood. Jesus, even though he is the son of God, God manifest in the flesh. He's under governors and tutors until the fullness of time. This is that Jesus, that until he's age 30, will grow in favor with God and man as a man. Not as a God man, but as a man. God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him at birth. Not from the womb. Not from the tomb, but from the womb. He is God, literally that there, that always has been God and will always be God. That literal Christ Jesus, born in the city of David, Christ the Lord, is none other than the Lord Jehovah God Almighty. But what we have to understand, a man lost it. By one man's disobedience, sin came to the world, and death by sin. Therefore, by one man shall my servant make many righteous. Jesus, even though he's God Almighty, before Abraham was, I am. He will work as a man for our redemption, our justification, our sanctification, and ultimate glorification. Therefore, in the days of Jesus' flesh, in the days of his flesh, God's own body, God's own body of flesh and blood, in the Son of God, he is the Father manifest in a body of flesh and blood. In the days of his flesh, this man, the man Christ Jesus, will be emptied out of glory because he has made himself of no reputation to work as a man through the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God will be dormant. It will not move as uh, this man is in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, even though it's God's own body. God, fulfilling his own uh, uh, plan of redemption, fulfilling the law, that the law was given that sin might appear exceedingly sinful and then to pay the penalty for sin by the ultimate death on the cross. That God himself will offer himself as a lamb. Therefore, we have the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. So in the days of Jesus' flesh, in the days of God's own embodiment, the embodiment of God in, in, the, in the days of his flesh. Jesus will pray as a man to the Father. Why? Because the Father, the God Almighty, has made himself of no reputation in order to be this man for our redemption. He has emptied out of glory in Philippians 2, 6 through 10. It's God himself that has made himself of no reputation. It is uh, God himself that's fulfilling the law in his own body of flesh and blood. 
working as a man because God, as the Spirit, has made himself of no reputation. Therefore, Jesus will not work a miracle. He will not work a miracle until of age 30. And he will take his priesthood at age 30, literally by going to be baptized of John and Jordan in Beth Arba at the place, the house of crossing over, where Jesus will go to John the Baptist, who was the son of Zacharias, who was of the course of Abijah in the Levitical priesthood. And uh, there, John the Baptist will then lay hands on Jesus, number one, two, put him under the water, there in baptism, three, raise, and uh, a voice spoke from heaven, thou art uh, my, my son. There, when God spoke that word, there came a sign that John would see on whosoever you see the Spirit, uh, on he it is uh, that is uh, baptize you with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. He is the Messiah. He is the Christ. Right there, Jesus took on the Melchizedek priesthood. At that point, Jesus began his ministry being about the age of 30. Why? Why 30? Because that was the age uh, that the high priest took his office. And Jesus is fulfilling the law as a man. As a man, he's going to be tempted. As a man, he's going to suffer. As a man, he's going to die because God can't die, can't be tempted, and cannot suffer. Therefore, God will make himself of no reputation. He is the Son of God, which is the Father, manifest in a body of flesh and blood. Therefore, the Son of God, in his humiliation, is working as a man through the eternal spirit, and the man must pray to the Father. Why? Because he's working salvation for us as a man through the spirit, even though it's God himself. God has made himself of no reputation to be that man. That man will fast, pray. He will daily make the word his delight. He will suffer and be tempted at all points like as we are. In all points, he was made like unto his brethren. He will literally grow in favor with God and with man. This man will pray to the Father. My Father is greater than I. The things concerning me have an end. He's speaking of his flesh. Uh, he will say, Father, glorify thou me. The Father will speak to him. Why? Because it's veiled. God has veiled or secreted himself, hidden himself, veiled himself in a body of flesh and blood. God spoke back to, back to the man Christ Jesus, saying, I have glorified you and I will glorify you again. He's progressively glorifying Jesus from the state of, of sinless, of sinful flesh and the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin to bring it all the way back to God working salvation in and of himself. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. There the man Christ Jesus, as he goes unto a mountain apart, up into a mountain apart, and he's transfigured before Peter, James, and John. And at that time they saw his face shone as it were the sun and his garments was glistening. Why? Because at that time Jesus who had taken his ministry about the age of 30, began to work. The first beginning of the miracles did uh, at the marriage in Cana beyond Galilee, uh, at, the, at the wedding, and his disciples with him, and he turned the water into wine. This began the miracles, first beginning of miracles that Jesus did. He will start working miracles. Why? As the high priest, how God anointed Christ Jesus of Nazareth who went about doing good, healing all manner of sickness and disease. Well, this is a man. It's God, but who has made himself of no reputation. Only one person, God working in and of his own body of flesh and blood, bringing the world, mankind, back to himself. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. Jesus then, uh, as he says, Father, glorify me with thine own self, 
with the glory I had with you before the world was. Jesus then uh, praying to the Father in Gethsemane as he dies on the cross. He's going to be glorified with God's own self. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. The veil went from top to bottom and the Son of God in his glorification, he went back to the Father. In his humiliation, he became a man, veiled in flesh, and then went back to God as the only true God in eternal life. I see our time's gone. Please take advantage of this offer. I know that it will be blessing to you as you behold the real Jesus. We count it an honor to come into your homes, your businesses with Behold the Real Jesus, as you have seen a controversial but yet true Jesus Christ. We have a great gift offer for you this month, a book that I wrote several years ago called The Heirs of the Trinity. It goes into the origin of the Trinitarian doctrine. Where did it come from? Binitarianism, oneness doctrine, and the true one God Jesus revelation in both his humiliation and glorification. You want to get it. I know it'll be a blessing to you. Normally $25, but we've made a gift offer along with that, the DVD, Behold the Real Jesus. It's a nuts and bolts uh, study on Jesus Christ in both his humiliation and glorification on a DVD format. We are offering both this month, The Heirs of the Trinity, a 455-page book breaking down uh, the origin of the Trinitarian, Binitarianism, Oneness Doctrine, uh, as well as the DVD, Behold the Real Jesus, a $45 value for a gift of $25 or more. We're going to make this offer to you, JCIC, offer number 20, right to me, Dennis Beard, Post Office Box 2906, Longview, Texas, zip code 75606. We'll get it right out to you again. That's JCIC, offer number 20. Uh, there, request the book, The Heirs of the Trinity, and Behold the Real Jesus DVD, and we'll rush it right out to you. Gift of $25 or more to help the ministry go on. And as you know, we go by your gifts and offerings as it airs, uh, by your love for the true Jesus. Until the next time, behold the real Jesus. <laughs>